Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. The next structure we're going to take a look at today is the choroid. Another one that we don't discuss very frequently, and it's not necessarily something that you have to be thinking about every single day. However, it is part of the eye, and it does play a very important role, so it's also extremely important that we know a little bit about it. And this is going to be a long one. We're just going to kind of go through what the choroid does, what it looks like, and again, it's going to give us a little bit of context as to how it helps the eye do its day-to-day -day functions. So once again, cross-section of the eye, and here highlighted is the choroid. It is actually just a layer between the retina and the sclera, uh, and it's very thin. You don't actually see it during eye exams or anything like that. Very difficult to actually look at the choroid because of the fact that it's sandwiched in between two major structures. Uh, now the choroid is the vascular layer of the eye laying between the sclera and the retina. So the blood from the choroid provides oxygen and nutrients to the outer layers of the retina. So the choroid is the main blood supply of the eye. This is the number one thing to remember with the choroid. It is the vascular tissue. Vascular tissue refers to cardiovascular system and that is where all the blood is found. Now the choroid forms the largest component of the uveal tract and we talked about the different uh, parts of the eye. We talked about how the uveal tract composes of the the blood containing parts, right? Um, and it derives its blood from circulation of the ciliary and ophthalmic and carotid arteries. Okay, so this is the big thing here. All the blood in the eye is concentrated in the choroid and it's and the other parts of the uveal tract, like the ciliary body uh, and the iris, they're also part of that vascular network. However, this, and if you notice the fact that it kind of goes all the way around the eye, it's very smartly designed in a sense that the all the parts of that uveal tract can derive the oxygenated blood from that structure. Now, a secondary function of the choroid is to limit uncontrolled reflections within the eye that could potentially result in the perception of confusing images. Uh, this is accomplished to the presence of the dark pigment melanin. So this is kind of more of a fun fact, right? So. Um, a lot of times, and I'm going to mention it in more detail when we start talking about the exact mechanism of how the eye, uh, you know, produces images and, and, and vision. However, we compare the eye to a camera quite often, and there's a reason why your camera has, is usually in a big black box or something like that, because you want darkness in there and you want to have a nice kind of somber environment so that an image can form. So the choroid actually creates that kind of cavern-like feel where everything inside is very dark. If things were reflective and, and shiny on the inside, as we've alluded to in this point, things, you'd get all sorts of ghost images and all sorts of weird kind of inf interference. Uh, the choroid actually and helps vision in that capacity. Even though it's primarily a vascular layer, it does have this secondary function of helping vision out. And so that pretty much does it for all the things you need to know about the choroid. There's obviously a little bit more. If we were talking about, uh, you know, a little bit more ophthalmology, where we have to be more concerned about about uh, strokes and different, uh, you know, different things involving blood supply and blood flow and things like that, we would be, you know, probably discussing it in more detail. But this doesn't really apply to us, and we have to stick to things that apply specifically to us as opticians. And here we are again in discussing the significance. Um, and the main thing that we need to know is that this is the primary blood supply of the eye. Quite that simple. Um, it's part of the uveal tract, which is like I was discussing in you know way back in the first kind of lectures in this chapter, understanding the different structures or in the different <clears throat> tunics of the eye and the different uh, you know categories helps us kind of put things together. Um, and unrelated in a way, but still related, it also reminds us that many other structures are avascular. Um, you know, we put so much emphasis that the choroid is the main vascular component of the eye, 
Well, it reminds us that other structures like the cornea and the crystalline lens are not vascular and they have to derive their oxygen and nutrients from other sources. So it's kind of an indirect thing that reminds you of a very important concept that you always have to remember about the other structures. And that pretty much does it for the choroid. I think uh, if you can grasp these concepts, you've got what it takes uh, as far as what, what it, you know, as far as the choroid itself, uh, we don't really have to delve into this any deeper. So we'll move on to the next slide and I hope you enjoyed this one.